My name is Anna Barker. I'm a health services researcher at the School of Public Health and Preventive Medicine at Monash University. I'm also the lead author on the six pack paper, which was an RCT that tested a, a falls prevention program in acute hospitals. Falls remain the leading patient safety incident in hospitals worldwide. Even though there's been considerable growth in initiatives to try and prevent falls in hospitals, they remain frequent and have many negative consequences, such as fractures, increased stress and burden for staff, and a loss of mobility for patients. From the patient's perspective, one of the biggest issues is that once they've had one fall, uh, they're worried. The fear of falling compromises their recovery. They get scared about getting out of bed. Uh, if they're less confident, they're probably more likely to fall. Uh, the problem of falls is uh, a significant issue on our ward. Um, I'm the nurse unit manager of the general medical ward here at Alfred Health. Um, upwards of 80% of our patients are at risk of falling. The six pack RCT aimed to test the six pack falls prevention program, which is a nurse led falls prevention program designed specifically for acute hospital wards. Six pack program includes a nine item risk assessment tool and six individualized interventions. This includes a falls risk alert sign above the patient's bed, supervision of the patients in the bathroom, ensuring that their gait aid is within reach, a toileting regime, use of a low-low bed and a bed chair alarm. The six-pack program was developed at a hospital in Melbourne by Quality Improvement Methods. A single centre study, an observational study, showed that it was feasible to implement within usual care resources and also that it was probable that it had a positive impact by reducing fall-related injuries. The reason that we undertook the six-pack RCT was to confirm these effects using more robust methods and also to test whether or not the six-pack program worked in hospitals other than the ones in which it was developed. The six-pack randomised control trial was part of a three-year research program. In the first year, we undertook a series of baseline pre-implementation studies where we sought to profile what was current falls prevention practice in hospitals and learn more about the problem of falls. The second year then involved the RCT, which ran for a 12-month period. And in the third year, we sought to continue to measure outcomes and practice to see what happened in the year after the randomised control trial. The six-pack RCT included 24 acute wards from six hospitals across Australia. This included 16 medical wards and eight surgical wards. Wards were randomised to either implement the six-pack program or continue on with usual care. The interventions included in the six-pack program are commonly used in hospitals and they're also recommended by best practice guidelines. However, studies in both the UK and Australia show that unfortunately, many high falls risk patients don't receive adequate prevention interventions. So there's much room for improvement of practice. Wards that implemented the six-pack program were supported by change management facilitator, program facilitator, audit, reminders and feedback to enhance the practice change. Key findings of the trial were the falls remained very prevalent in acute hospital wards. Rates of falls approached 18 per thousand bed days in some wards and four per thousand bed days for fall related injuries. In terms of practice, the six pack trial saw wonderful improvements in falls prevention practice. There was increased completion of the falls risk assessment tool. There was increased use of the six interventions that we targeted in the six pack program. Unfortunately, these improved practice did not translate to improved patient outcomes. We saw no change in the rates of falls or falls related injuries in the intervention compared to the control wards participating in the six pack trial. This trial is the largest falls prevention trial to have ever been conducted worldwide. It employed robust methods in terms of the collection of falls data, where data was collected from multiple sources, as we know that many routine sources of falls data in hospitals is inaccurate, such as incident reporting. We included all patients that were admitted to the wards, leading to a sample size of over 30,000 patients that were included in this trial. The reason why the six-pack program had no impact on falls and falls-related injuries may relate to the interventions that were included in the six-pack program. 
Recent research has highlighted that low, low beds and bed chair alarms may have no impact on falls or falls related injuries in hospitals. It is likely that falls prevention programs may need to have a greater focus on the prevention of delirium. Acute confusion is a key risk factor for falls in hospitals and indeed studies that we did in the pre-implementation period showed that nurses rated it as the number one risk factor for falls in their hospital and also found that falls in, in people with confusion were the most challenging to prevent. Falls can occur in seconds and they have really serious consequences for the patient. There's a really pressing need for innovative solutions to the problem of falls in the acute hospital setting. We need to be thinking about novel approaches, potentially environmental redesign, looking at ways that we can structure the environment to best prevent falls, potentially system level interventions that incorporate a whole of systems approach to patient safety in hospitals.